the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. Hi everyone, Simone Millis is here, your host for this amazing podcast. I am very happy to introduce you to it, the Art and Industry of Business and Living. So what I've done is I've actually asked Rebecca, who works closely with me, to come on so that we can talk about the art and industry of business and living. And what is that? The beginning of it. Exactly. Yay. (laughs) So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be inviting a whole bunch of people that we work with, that we know, who live around the world, 173 countries all over the world that are involved in access consciousness. And they are facilitators of Joy of Business, which is a specialty class under Access Consciousness, of Benevolent Capitalism, of Right Riches for You, of Right Voice for You, all these different specialties, which to me is the place of how you can create your life to be better and greater. To look at those places that are not working and ask what can you change and what can you add so it becomes more. And also look at the places in your life and your business that are working and ask What can we now institute to create this to be even greater? So all of these podcasts are going to be along these lines and we've got some really, really cool, great people that we're going to be inviting along. And today was just a sort of an introduction and I asked Rebecca to come on and maybe ask me a bunch of questions so that we could give you some more clarity on what's what's occurring with this podcast. Well, first, I would actually like to know, like, what makes you excited about this podcast and especially this title? Because this is a title that was given to you by Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, which we we then tweaked, which we can talk about later. But when you first heard the title and when you asked him for a title for this podcast, like what was going through your mind when that happened? Uh, (laughs) Good question. And as you asked that, I'm like, all right, let's set the scene. I was in Venice, Italy (laughs) at a restaurant in summer. So sitting outside with about, you know, 15 people. And I, Gary was sitting next to me and I asked him about it. And as soon as he said it, I've got to say the initial thing that happened was my whole being and my whole body lit up. Now, you know, Joy of Business is a book that I've written and especially class that we created with Access Consciousness. And for me, business is very joyful. For me, your life and your living is your business. Now, Rebecca, you asked me this question and this morning, only this morning, did I have a meeting with somebody that I've been working with for a very long time. And she said to me, you know what? I've never looked at this as a business. And it's one of the projects that I work on with her. And I realized that so many people don't do that. And I said, wow, for years I've been saying, if you wake up in the morning and you have blood running through your veins, you're in business. And I also say, you know, business is your life and your life is your business. And I realized this morning that people don't get that, that they just sort of look at me and go, yeah, yeah, she's probably some loopy, crazy woman. But for me, it's like, it it is. And it's like, it's one of the most creative things in the world. And if you are not willing to be aware of what you are currently creating, you cannot change it. So it's not about you being wrong. It's not about, you know, finding those limitations or the conclusions or finding an answer. It's actually about asking questions and having the awareness of what you're currently creating so that you can change it to create the life that you would like to have. I mean, for example, I went to Pilates today and my Pilates instructor, who's this amazing woman, absolutely amazing. She's phenomenal at what she does. And every time I say that to her, she sort of gets this like, oh, and she'll come up with a justification of why she's not. Now, how common is that? Most people have some reason and justification for why they have decided that they are not great at something. And to me, this is your life. This is your living. This is your business. What are you creating? What if you could create so much more. And what if you were allowed to? I mean, right now, listening to this podcast, what if you actually gave yourself permission to create something greater? I so love this. And you've gone down 10 different tangents that I want to go down immediately. But for (laughs) one of them, I was psychic. And I I wrote some notes beforehand because I was like, right, I get to interview Simone. What do I want to ask her that I've never asked her before? And True to form, you said, if you have blood running through your veins, you're in business. And 
I know that's one of the things that people have looked at you and gone, yeah, okay. But why, why do you say that? Why is this such a thing that you're, you've said so many times in your life? I mean, the whole, <laughs> the whole idea of like, you've got blood running through your veins and it's like, if you do, then you're alive. You have a pulse. <laughs> if you don't, then we have a problem. <laughs> so, but that's, that's what it is to me. It's like, you're alive. This is it. This is your life. And it's like, you know, this is not a dry run. You're not getting a second chance at this, not at this life anyway, not at this life with this body. So with this life and this body, what is it that you would like to be choosing? Now, I mean, my partner, Brendan Watt, who, you know, he will quite often talk about this. When we first, um, you know, met, started dating, etc. he decided to move in. So he did, <laughs> but he would, we would wake up in the morning and I would frustrate the hell out of him <laughs> because I'd wake up and I'd be like, All right, let's go, you know, and not let's go to him for me. I was like, oh, what am I going to create? And as I made a coffee or I made a juice or I made a smoothie, I would get super enthused about what I could create that day. And he used to wake up depressed and cranky and all of this. And one of the tools in access consciousness is who does this belong to? So he had this tool and he used to ask, okay, who does this belong to? And he realized that, you know, most of the time when he had you know, this depressive sort of point of view going on in the morning, it wasn't his, he was, you know, psychic as we all are extremely psychic and buying into other people's points of view, but he would buy them as his. Now, usually what would happen is this would go on for a few days. And then I remember one day when he said to me, he looked at me and he goes, will you stop being so happy? <laughs> and I said, no. And we started laughing and he started laughing. He said, you waking up every morning in this creative mode, and being so happy is really hard for me to stick to this depressive mode that I keep choosing every day. So I'm going to say it did take him at least a year and doesn't have to take you a year, but it did take him at least a year to make the choice to choose something different. Okay. So you have to make the choice to choose something different and then something different can show up. So it's like how many of you are struggling and trying to find that place of like, you know, business in your life is this trauma and drama and this, you know, I don't know, this telenovela that it's like you've got all the problems in the world. I mean, one of the things that a couple of my friends and I joke about is, you know, when you come up with something that's a problem and you go, really, it's a, it's a first world problem. Like, do you actually really have a problem? I mean, if you even stop and look at your life now, it's like, truth, do you actually really have a problem or are you trying to create one so that you blend in and you have this commonality of purpose with everybody else? So for me, the art and industry of business and living is literally, it is the art. And it's like, it's the art of living the way you would like to live. Every single person and being is completely different. So why the hell are you trying to be like somebody else? My invitation to you is to stop trying to be like anybody else and start asking, what would my life be like if I was to live as me? If I was to be me, what would I choose? Now, mm. Dr. Dane here, who is a wonderful, awesome guy that we, Rebecca and myself, happen to work with, and he's written a book called Be You Changing the World. And it's like, so if you're being you, you actually change the world. If you be you, you are an invitation for something more to show up. Oh, yeah. And guess what? That means more business, more money, better relationships, greater sex, all of it. That's what you become. And that's what I would like to see created with this podcast. Oh, my God. The amount of tools that you just splurted out in 10 seconds is amazing. <laughs> if there's a world record for who can give out the most tools in the least amount of time between you, Dane, and Gary Douglas, there is going to be a, a triple draw. Yay! <laughs> you all win. <laughs> So I want to dig into the topic and the title a little bit more because we haven't yet had an opportunity to do this. So I'm, I'm selfishly using this now. Like what makes business an art? Well, I guess, I mean, okay. So if you look at the wording art, okay. And it's like every single person sees art in a different way and they like different art. I mean, for me, it's like, you know, Salvador Dali was one of my favorite artists growing up. It's like, I always loved his work. And I've noticed that I've sort of gone off some of his work. I still love it, but not as much as what I used to. And it's like, and then you look at something like Picasso, and then you look at someone who takes great photos. And then you look at someone who makes a wonderful dessert. 
they're all artists and they're all something completely different. And it's only our judgment that makes something better or greater or worse or bad, etc. And it's like, what if you could look at you as the artist of your life? Look at you as the artist with your business. I mean, if you look at business, for example, how many people try and do industry standard? I mean, what the hell is industry standard anyway? The only thing I would ask is that you look at industry standard and say, okay, how can I use this to my advantage? Because if that is something that people feel comfortable with, you could use something that is industry standard and then create it as your own. So what if the art and industry of business was the business and living that you could create and you create it as your own, as you see fit for the world? Your awareness is unique. Nobody else has the awareness that you have. And has anybody ever asked you about your awareness? And what if even you started asking you about your awareness? Like if I was aware of what I could create today, what would I choose? And every single creation is, is an act of art. And how many people think that you have to go to art school or you have to be able to paint a picture or you have to be able to sculpt something or you have to be able to take a perfect picture? And it's like, what if it wasn't that? That's art as we are trained to look at in the world. And it's like, what if you wrote a great book? And it's like, what if you have an art of kindness? What if you're one of those people out there who is just wakes up and is incredibly kind and has a generosity of spirit? What if that was an art? So in truth, what if this was all about being you? And it's like, what would you choose? And if no one has asked you for your awareness yet, we're asking you right now. So this is something that it gets me excited. I want I want more podcasts right now, even though we're in the middle of making one. What are you excited about that we're going to create in this podcast coming up, like in the episodes you see coming up? I know you've already created a few, so maybe you can give us a little sneak peek for what you might see people listening to in the future. Yeah, look, I, Rebecca, I would really like people to get out of this something for them. And this is not about, you know, hey, I've got the answer or, or the people I know have the answer. I know some amazing, wonderful, you know, intelligent, bright, happy, aware people in the world. And what I would like to share with everybody is that they can have that and be that too. And I would like to look at every single podcast that we're doing, that somebody can walk away with some tool or some question that they can start to change the area of their life that they think, quote unquote, is not working for them. So, I mean, I know we've got some coming up with uh, Trichissa and Steve Bowman, fabulous friends of mine who live in Melbourne, Australia, and they have worked in the corporate industry for a long, long time. And they create their books that they write and they create their seminars with such a unique way of looking at things. And I constantly see these people be what we call benevolent capitalism, which is basically about, you know, creating more for the better of all. And then I've got some podcasts with you coming up, Rebecca, which we talk about, you know, looking at creating with a team of people and what does that look like and how do you work with people and how do you create with different energies? And also Lauren Marie, it's like, has, uh, has done some podcasts with me too. So there's going to be a lot of different people coming on, but basically I would like to know also and get some feedback of anything that you would like to hear about. I mean, we can talk about anything from business with hiring staff with you know how to create a business and it's like or with living and it's like what sort of relationship would you like to have and it's like we can include anything and everything in here but basically this is about for you to be able to walk away and have a tool or a question because the thing is we talk about question a lot in access consciousness and if you ask questions you will always allow something greater to show up if you go to an answer you literally stop the energy now I'll give you a short story about this, about asking questions. Because for me, when I first heard this, it's like, you're not taught to ask questions. You're taught to have the answer, you know, at school. You know, I mean, I remember I used to get in trouble at school because I would give an answer for the math homework, but I couldn't show how I got it. So I was considered wrong. And it's like, seriously, just because I didn't get it the way you wanted me to get it, I'm now wrong. It's like, how many people in the world have been you know, had that projected at them and guess what? You're not wrong. So here's a, here's a quick question. How does it get any better than this? Now, a friend of mine 
she went to Paris, France once to do some business. Now she was doing business and her idea was that when she'd finished, she was going to go stay at this fabulous five-star hotel that she always wanted to stay at. And she would, you know, celebrate, like have this night at this hotel. She didn't book a room. So she walks into the hotel, you know, in the afternoon and says, the guy says, can I help you? And she says, yeah. She said, I'd like a room for the night. And he said, I'm sorry, we're full. And she stood there because she didn't sort of have a plan B. <laughs> so she stood there and went, oh, how does it get any better than this? Which is a question. And the guy looked at her and he said, I I'm sorry, ma'am. Like, you know, how can I help you? He sort of stumbled because he's like, she should be walking away now, you know, but she asked a question. And she said, how does it get any better than this? And he said, you know, ma'am, what do you need? And she said, well, I, I would like a room for the night. And he said, just hold on a moment. And he went and got his manager and the manager came out and said, what can I do for you? And she said, I'd like a room for the night. And he looked at the bookings and he said, I'm sorry, we're full. And she said, how does it get any better than this? So he said, just one moment. And he started looking at his, um, the computer again. And he said, ma'am, he said, we have one room available. It's the penthouse suite. I can give it to you for one night only at the standard room rate. But that, you know, that's all sort of thing. And she was like, great. How does it get any better than this? You know, they even sent up a bottle of champagne. So she stood there and kept asking questions and more showed up. It's like, how often do you take the conclusion or the answer that somebody else goes to rather than asking a question and a simple question, how does it get any better than this? And my suggestion to you is ask that question when things are not going so great. Now also ask the question when things are going awesome. I mean, can you imagine the next time you're having great sex and you ask, how does it get any better than this? Okay, what else can show up? Your whole body's like, okay, let's do this. So questions. So we'll be talking a lot about that. And every single podcast, I'd like you to come away with a question that you can start to change your entire life. This is so cool. And, and this is the amazing part about this is that the questions and the tools that we use are easy. Imagine that. They're easy. Yeah. Anyone can <laughs> use them. And you don't have to get them right. And you don't have to play with them in a certain way. And it's simply about playing and using the tools that you want to. What's your favorite question, Rebecca? Um, I still have one favorite from the time that you gave me, which is what possibilities are available that I have not yet instituted. Nice. I like that. Yeah, definitely one of my favorites. Simone asked this on a meeting, I think. I think it was three or four years ago now, if you can believe it. Seems like forever. <laughs> I know. Haven't we always known each other? And we're in this meeting, and it's one of the very first ones that I was working in, and she kept asking this question. And I'm like, well, I don't know any possibilities that are available that we haven't yet instituted. I'll just, I'll just go and check my email. And so I'm multitasking in this meeting and I'm checking my email and I'm not thinking I'm doing very well. And we catch up after and she's like, how do you think the meeting went? And I said, like, well, it was great. I just didn't have anything that was a possibility where it was available. But I checked my email and I found this and this and this and this and this. And she goes, Rebecca, do you realize that's exactly what the question was? What possibilities are available that we've not yet instituted? You just came up with 10 different possibilities. <laughs> so these questions and tools can sneak up on you. That's my little PSA, public service announcement. They can sneak up on you <laughs> and you will find that they work anyway, even when you think they're not. They can. And I just want to tell all the listeners too, that if you want to find out more about some of the tools we're talking about, you can go to accessconsciousness.com. And as I mentioned at the beginning, Access Consciousness is in, uh, I think it's 173 or 174 countries. We have facilitators all over the world. You can attend a bars class or a foundation class, choice of possibilities. The list is endless. You can also check us out at accessjoyofbusiness.com, which is based on the book that I wrote using the Access Consciousness tools, because my target would be every single business in the entire world asking questions and having fun with their business so that they can create the life and the living that I know that is actually possible with none of the limitations or the conclusions that they've decided mean so much. And the next thing I'd like to say is one of the things that we will be using a lot on the podcast is what we call a clearing statement. You can check this out at theclearingstatement.com and my good friend Dr. Dane here explains it very, very well. I'm going to give it to you right now. It's 
basically if you're looking at something that you've created as a limitation or a stuck point of view, sort of like a roadblock energy, it's like you can say, okay, everything that doesn't allow you to know that you can create everything that you've ever asked for, will you destroy and uncreate it? So you're destroying and uncreating that point of view, that roadblock, that place that you are stuck. Right, And the clearing statement is right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And basically what you're doing is you're going to the point of creation and the point of destruction of where you created that point of view. So, I mean, it could be anything. It could be from another lifetime. It could be from when you were five years old and, you know, somebody said to you, you know, you'll never be able to create everything you asked for. So then you buy that as a point of view and you're now 35 going, well, I can't create everything I asked for because someone told me when I was five that I couldn't, which is sounds insane, right? But yeah, guess what? We do function from insanity. So this clearing statement seems to unlock a lot of that. And if you can't remember it, that's totally fine. You can just say all that stuff they spoke about on the podcast because it's literally energy or you could just shorten it and say pock and pod that. So just try it out and try it out with the next time that you think something is not possible or you go to that place of I can't, you know, I cannot do this, etc. pock and pod everything that that is. I mean, one of the things that I used to write on a little sticky note and I had in my bathroom forever was I used to say at the end of each night before I went to bed, pock and pod everywhere that I have uninvited money today. And that's all I would do. Pock and pod everywhere that I have uninvited money today and then I would go to sleep. Now, I'm sure we're going to get into into some other podcasts talking about money because it's one of my favorite topics because for me, money is so much fun. It's such a creation and it is so much fun. And I have been and done everything. I have invested. I have, you know, received investments. I have lost money in companies. I've made lots of money. I was $187,000 in debt about 15 years ago and ended up writing a book about it called Getting Out of Debt Joyfully. So I'm sure we're going to talk about those tools. But one of the things is I knew I needed to change my point of view. So what I would ask is where do you have to change your point of view? That if you changed your point of view would create something greater for your business and your living. And that's where you can use the clearing statement. Pock and pod. Can't go wrong. Just play with it. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. So I think we're almost about at the end of the podcast here, Rebecca. Do you have any more questions or anything else that you think we should be letting the listeners know about of what's 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 up for them with this podcast coming out there into the big wide world? Well, I mean, I could go on all day on this topic, too. So we'll keep it short and sweet. But the other thing I just wanted to mention, like if you did want to bring in like I've come up with 10 more topic ideas in this five minutes alone. So if you do want to share your suggestions of topic ideas, if you want to ask another question or go, hey, what do you mean, Simone? You can email create at simonemillicis.com and we will actually respond to you. And we'd love your topic ideas and suggestions. That is for sure. The other thing is I would connect with us on social media as well. We're having some of the most grandest adventures of living every single day. And so if you search for Simone Millicis on Facebook or Instagram, you will you will find a very inspiring woman living a fabulous life that you may want to be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's spell that for them because I know that my last name is not easy to spell. So the first name is Simone, or it's Simon with an E, and then Millicis is M-I-L-A-S-A-S. So for that email, it's create at Simone Millicis, S-I-M-O-N-E-M-I-L-A-S-A-S dot com. So thank you so much. Okay, I'm so thrilled that you came on here today with me, Rebecca, because as usual, I have 50 billion things to do today. And I was like, Rebecca, do you have this this amount of time in here? And she's like, yep, I do. (laughs) So let's do this. Exactly. Small windows create big possibilities. I like that. Small windows create big possibilities. See, there you go. That's another podcast. Very close. Coming to you. Soon. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much, Rebecca Hulse. And if you want to find out more about Rebecca as well, she, you can find her on the accessjoybusiness.com site and the Access Consciousness site too. And go visit simonemillicis.com. Okay. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone.